I'm gonna, you're unmuted. I'm gonna start us up on Zoom. There we go. All right, and Kimber's here, hello, Kimber Buchanan. I'll stop saying last names. In case you need like okay. a word. It just it has sort of like a Sesame Street feel or something. I don't know. Uh, that's pretty great. If you want to. Yeah. That's Let great. I will. You'll be our muscle model. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You need to be on hand though because they don't have the same precautions that we do. So yeah. anybody can join. Gotcha. Hello, hello everyone, welcome to class. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, I see some friends. Hello. We're going to let everybody kind of come in. We're gonna take just a couple minutes to let everybody come in. Hi, I see you, you look so excited. I'm so excited for you guys to be here. Bambi's here. Bambi's here. Oh, I'm so. Greg is here. Greg is here. <laughs> I'm especially excited that Bambi is here because um, Bambi is an expert on lots of different things, including <laughs> computer science and engineering and even prosthetic limbs, which is important to what we are going to be building today. Hmm, I wonder what we're going to be building today. Ooh, someone might have us... Uh, Ooh, let me mute everybody, that'll help. I'm going to mute. Oh, you getting it, Matt? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> there we go. So I just muted everybody, so that will help with that. I'm not quite sure who was being echoey, but I've muted everybody, so they won't be echoey for now. I bet we'll figure out who is echoey later when we try to talk. And then they'll know, oh no, it's me, and I probably need to stay muted the whole time. <laughs> so if you figure out that it was you who was the really echoey one, <laughs> you're going to probably have to be muted for our, for our lesson today. Um, but I'm going to keep everybody muted just for a little bit um, as a few more people join us in class. At about 2.03, 2.04, I'm going to lock our classroom door so that nobody else can come in, so that way we'll know exactly who all is here for class today because that'll be that'll be the whole thing that'll be everybody who's here but I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes I'm gonna show you what project we're going to be working on today as well give you a little preview in a world where there are muscles and bones like that but I don't have a I don't have a great in a world voice <laughs> So if you're joining in, I'm actually going to put some supplies. Where did I put my supply list? Nope, not that one, not this one. It's over here somewhere. I'm going to put that up so that you can start to gather that stuff if you'd like. To make a supply list. That's right. Is that my online? Yep. Yep. I am going to make a quick supply list so that we've got that handy. So I'll zoom in a little bit. We'll give it just a couple more minutes for people to join and then we'll lock it down. Supplies. Is Sigrid back? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome, Sigrid. <laughs> Glad you're here. All right. We are going to need some cardboard. We're going to need some tape and scissors. I need some of that. I figured you knew you need a cardboard because it's called a cardboard creation. So you probably figured that out. Um, so we've got tape and scissors. We are going to need a brad, which looks like this. You might need a brad or a paper clip. You'll just need one though. You'll need some tape. Oh, we already put that on there. Um, 
you'll need a popsicle stick and you'll need some string or a pipe cleaner. All right, is that? Oh, and uh, a pencil or a, like a chopstick, something, uh, something straight and pokey. <laughs> Someone is excited to be unmuted. I will I will unmute you in just a little bit. Yep, there was a little echo from someone, so I'm going to keep everybody muted for just a minute. All right, so I'm gonna leave that up there for just a second, but I'm also gonna go ahead and lock our classroom door so that nobody else can come in. So if you have somebody that you wanted to join in who's not quite here yet, ah, that's okay. They can watch us on our YouTube stream. So if they go to... Um, if they go to uh, YouTube, they can search for Bird Brain Technologies and they can watch us there, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and lock the classroom now. All right, no new attendees can join this meeting once we're locked, all right. So now, fantastic. I know just about everyone here, this is great. And I'm gonna unmute you guys in just a second, but first, we are in video class today. So we're in school. This school is a little different from most schools you've probably been to, although some of you might be getting used to doing Zoom school now. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about what, uh, what Zoom school is like and what we should do when we're here. So in school, right now you're all muted, but show me what you do when you have a question or you want to contribute something. Everybody show me on your screens. What do you do? You raise your hand, right? Everybody show me raising your hand, right? Well, I can't see that very well though. So in this school with me, what I want you to do when you raise your hand, some of you know already, is I want you to stick your hand out right in front of the computer um, camera and wave it back and forth. So everybody do that really quick so that I know what it looks like. Ready? Very good. So that's how we raise our hand in video school. Great. Also, if you really like something in class or if you are frustrated in class or if you are feeling something in class, you can usually say that out loud. Um, so, but here in Zoom school, you can't always say things out loud. So we have to show that visually. So does anyone have any ideas? What could you do if you really like a project that someone else made? If you like it, what would it, what would you do? If you like something that I do or something someone else does, what might you do with your hands or with your face? You could do a heart, you could do a thumbs up. Very good. I saw someone do this. This is like applause in sign language. You could do that as well. You just have to show us. How about this? If you get frustrated while we're making stuff, show me your frustrated face. What does that look like? <clears throat> or maybe like, <clears throat> those are really good frustrated faces, you guys. <laughs> those are wonderful. Um, so show, show me. And if you have a question, make sure to wave at the camera like this like that so that I can see that you have a question okay and we'll take lots of breaks as we're as we're making where I'll check in and make sure that I can see everybody okay so um, also for safety reasons uh, that's one of the reasons that we locked our classroom is that we um, we uh, we lock it so that nobody who shouldn't be here um, is comes into our classroom so if anybody's being disruptive or anything like that we'll kick them out and they can't come back in so um, we've got lots of safety features built into our classroom. And also, as you noticed, you are all muted right now, but I'm going to make it so that you can unmute yourselves because I want to know who's here today. So make sure you don't tell me your last names. I just want to know your first name and what you had for breakfast this morning. That's what I want to know. So my name's Kelsey, and for breakfast, for breakfast this morning, I had some tea. So I'm going to um, unmute everybody. There we go. Uh, you may still be muted on your end. So um, let's see. Oops. Unmute. There we go. So you guys are now unmuted. So raise your hand. Show me that you know how to raise your hand if you want to introduce yourself first. How about, um, it looks like your name is Grady. You've been here before. Grady, why don't you introduce yourself? You had eggs. That's great. Who else would like to... Yeah, and toast. That's good. Who else would like to introduce themselves? How about the three of you? There's a boy and two girls. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Just your names and what you had for breakfast. My name is Alexis. That's Layla. That's breakfast. And... Oh, 
someone's uh, crinkling some paper next to her thing. That's all right. Um, all right, so you guys, uh, I know you guys are coming in from a really fun place, too, because we've met before. Um, okay, so um, who else would like to introduce themselves? Like, let's get two more people to introduce themselves. Wait, raise your hand, like I showed you, if you want to introduce yourself. How about you, Sigrid? Introduce yourself. My name is Sigrid, and I had bread and jam for breakfast. Wonderful. That's awesome. One more person. How about uh, the person who's wearing headphones um, and a little microphone like this? Uh, hi, my name is Aparna. Hi, Aparna. I'm from, I'm from India. Oh, wonderful. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> and there's one other person who has headphones and a headset, too. It looks like you are a girl. Is your name maybe Kimber? Or are you related to some? Yes. What's your name? Introduce yourself. I'm Kimber, and uh, I had cereal and pancakes for breakfast. Ooh, those sound good. I like that. That's great. Well, I'd also like to go now and have someone really... I'm going to mute us all again. Um, and we're going to... Yeah meet someone really cool. Um, her name is Dr. Bambi Brewer, and I'm gonna unmute just her, and we're gonna spotlight her, because um, I'd like you to introduce yourself, Bambi. Hi, I'm Bambi. Um, this is my dining room. <laughs> uh, I'm the director of engineering at Bird Brain Technologies, so I usually am one of the people who are designing the robots and writing the software and deciding what things will look like. So you don't see me very often on webinars. Um, but before I did this, yeah. uh, my expertise was in robotics for rehabilitation. So for helping people after they've had stroke or traumatic brain injuries or after they've lost a limb. So I went through all the training that's required um, to make an artificial limb. So if somebody has lost uh, hand, an arm or a leg, um, then how you make that artificial one for them. And most of those right now aren't robotic. Um, there are a few robotic ones, but most of them um, are more like springs made of carbon fiber um, and plastics uh, and, of course, foot shells so that it fits in your shoe. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Especially if you have a robot leg, you should make sure that you have a, a robot leg that can fit in your shoe. Well, the reason that I'm so glad that Bambi could be on our call today is because this is the project that we are going to be making today. We're going to be making a mechanized version of a joint. Now a joint is, and let me know if I'm right here, Bambi, a joint is a place where two bones come together, is that right? Yeah, yeah. two bones meet so that, they can, so that you can bend your arms or your legs or move your yeah. shoulders. Yeah, exactly. So um, if we take a look at our robot right here, um, in this robot, this is a model of an arm. So you guys can practice with me if you want. Something that I learned about muscles is that they, they usually work in pairs or they usually work in groups of two. So this is a model of the elbow joint and there are two muscles that work together to bend your elbow up and down. It's the bicep and the tricep. And so when one muscle is getting shorter, and is that called flexion, Bambi, when it's getting shorter like that? Okay, so you can so bend it's your... It's flexion, uh -huh. your bicep is getting shorter, which is called contracting, uh -huh. while your tricep is getting longer, which is called extending. All right, so when you bend your arm up, your, uh, your bicep is flexing, or it's in flexion, or it's contracting, it's getting shorter. And then when you bend your arm down, it's getting longer. And your tricep is always doing the opposite. So now my tricep's getting shorter, and my tricep's getting longer, shorter and longer. And you can feel that. If you pull your arm back like this, you can feel your tricep back there. If you pull it back and make it really tight, or if you like do the big muscle, when somebody says, show me your muscles, right? They're like, mm, show me your muscles. They're saying, show me your bicep. That's what they're saying. <laughs> So um, this original robot, or I should say this original robot, was made by some middle schoolers um, with um, uh, Brett Slezak, who was an amazing educator just outside Pittsburgh. And he was having his kids um, understand how muscles and bones work together. Um, bones don't just move themselves. They have to have muscles to help them do that. So each group got a different um, joint that they had to make, and then they had to bring that to life. So that's what we're going to do today, too, but we're going to do it with craft supplies. So this is sort of a simplified version of that joint that I just showed you. So it's got a couple of bones. This is the joint where the two bones come together. And then this is like the bicep, and this is like the tricep. And while one is pulling, the other one is kind of slack. It's loose. And now the tricep is pulling, 
and it's pulling the back of the back of the elbow up. So this is an elbow. Bambi, are there other bones that work like this one that you know about that have like two muscles? Uh, or there, are there other joints that we could point out that work like this one does? Oh, we're, we muted you. Sorry, let me unmute you. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, actually, I think you muted yourself, so you got to unmute yourself, Bambi. There we go. Thank you. I mm -hmm. tried, but it wouldn't let me. No, That's okay. Um, so also, if anybody wants to put one in the chat window, if you can think of a joint that looks like that, ah. please go ahead and do that. Um, yeah. Think of a lot that our body has. <laughs> Those are joints they call hinge joint, hinge joints. Yeah, their knee. Mm -hmm. That's a great one, Secret. Um, so they're hinge joints that move just in and out like a door. Um, those are the knee. I bet you can think of some more. <laughs> fingers, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and your fingers. Let me. Toes. Let me unmute everybody. And if you have one, if you have an idea about a. What else? Oh, the wrist. That's a great one. That one might move up and down like that. Yeah. That's a good one, Jeff. We can kind of move our wrists a little bit side to side. Yeah, we side. might. Mostly. The shoulder, Andrew, is actually really interesting because it's a little bit different because you can move that one all the way around. So it's not like a hinge. We call it a ball and socket joint. Ah. It's like because you can move it all the way around. Like if you're doing those circles in gym class, you can move it in more directions than you can your elbow or your knee. Your yeah. Ankle, our ankle is pretty much like a hinge joint. It doesn't go too far in any other direction. <laughs> yeah, there we go. A little <laughs> side to side, but not. Yeah. Side. <laughs> did you have another one? Uh, it looks like maybe your computer screen froze, Jeff, or your Did you have another idea about another joint? Show us with your show us on your screen there if you've got another idea. Yeah? All right. Well, so what we're going to what we're going to investigate now is we're going to investigate how to make such a thing, okay? So we're gonna investigate how to make um, this, uh, you're good. We're gonna investigate how to make uh, this joint like this right here. So let me give you a list of supplies. Uh, I'll put that list of supplies up here again. And I'm going to take mine apart so that we can kind of learn how it was built. And then we're gonna kind of put it back together, together. So go ahead and go grab these car these supplies as we talk. So you're gonna need, I have this right here is a chopstick and I'm gonna pull mine off of here and out of here so that you can see how it's working. So you might need a, a craft stick, a popsicle stick, something like that. That's what's gonna move our, our thing up and down. So you need a popsicle stick. Um, you'll need a, 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 what's this called? Chopstick or a pencil, right? Something round like that, that can kind of move through cardboard. You'll need some, either a pipe cleaner or some string. Um, either one of those works really well. Just kind of depends what you have at your house. So if you have a pipe cleaner, you can use that. If you have some string, you can use that. You'll also need some, you'll need one of these little things. I mentioned it before. This is called a brad. Um, so that's what's poking through here and making it so my two pieces of cardboard can be next to each other. So you could use a brad if you've got one of those handy, or you could also use a, um, a paper clip like so. Um, so a brad or a paper clip like that. And then you'll also need some cardboard. Um, and that cardboard can be a cardboard like this, like a corrugated cardboard, we call it, when it's got like two, two layers on it. Or it could also be... Um, like thinner, like uh, the kind of cardboard that you might get on a, a cereal box. This is called chipboard. So you could also use chipboard. So whatever you've got handy, these are the supplies that you're going to need to have. All right. So let's get started, shall we? Um, and make sure, like I said, if you're muted and you have a question about anything, wave your hand like this or um, put it in the chat window. If I don't see you raising your hand like this, you can always say, hey, I have a question in the chat window. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna scooch some things off to the side. Leave those supplies up there just for a second. The first thing we need to do is we need to cut two pieces of cardboard. Those are gonna be our two bones, all right? So I'm gonna grab my scissors, snip, snip, and I'm gonna cut out two strips of cardboard. So. I have a question for you, Bambi, while we're cutting our cardboard into two strips. 
which is, um, what was the first prosthetic that you ever worked on? Hmm. Or one of the first ones, yeah. That I ever worked on, or the first one that I ever saw? I don't know, which one do you want to talk about? I think I'll talk about the first one that I ever saw because my grandfather used it for the thesis. Oh, what was um, his like? He wore a hook uh, because he lost his hand in World War II. So he had a hook that opened and closed. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wait. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I wonder if Bambi has <laughs> it? Question mark? Bambi might actually... I don't know. Maybe she's got... I am fascinated to see what Bambi is going to go get right now. <laughs> I'm not concerned. Just interested. Whoa! Look at that. Wow! My grandfather passed away a few years ago, and my grandmother gave it to me. So if you pull on this cable, then the hook closes. Can you move? Yeah, move it up a little. Perfect. Yeah, so that closes. Sorry, it has a lock on it that's a little bit better at triggering than I am. Doesn't really want to let go now. It's been around for a little while too, it seems like. It has, <laughs> and he drilled some holes in it, which, just so you know, is not a recommended <laughs> treat your prosthesis. <laughs> Why did he drill holes in it, Bambi? He thought it would make it cooler. Ah, did it work? It doesn't really. No. Oh, all right. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> all right. So coming back to our project here, you've cut a couple pieces of cardboard. And the next thing to do is we're going to kind of arrange them like a joint. Now, if we take a look back at my project on the wall, you'll notice that the, that the, um, the, the two pieces, I'll put these side by side, the two pieces of cardboard are not lined up like right up against each other like that. They're actually overlapping a little bit. And that's because if you, if you touch your elbow, if I go back to this shot and you touch your elbow, you have this little like, this little knobby piece on it right here. That is this whole bone, you can feel it, goes all the way back here. And that's what your muscle attaches onto. And I think, but I'm not sure, and, and I don't know if you know this Bambi, but is that when you hit your funny bone, is that what you're hitting? Are you like hitting this like, what are you hitting back there when you hit your funny bone? No, you're hitting, I think it's your cubital nerve. But you're oh. hitting a nerve that has to run along the back of your elbow okay. up to your spinal cord. Oh, all right. So that sounds like an important one that you probably shouldn't bang on stuff. That's probably why it hurts when you bang it on stuff. <laughs> um, okay, so when we are arranging our cardboard and thinking about where to poke our holes, one hole is going to be right at the end of, of one of our pieces of cardboard. I'm going to label this bone number one. And that's going to be the top, like the top bone. And then I'm going to label this one bone number two. You don't need to label them if you don't want to. Um, but it's just going to help me keep track of where we're going to poke our holes. So we're going to poke one hole on bone number one, like right at the end. And then on bone number two, I'm going to move that hole like in or up a little bit because I want those to line up so that there's a little bit of overlap here. So, oh, Sigrid had a quick question. Let's go over to you, Sigrid. Let me unmute you. Uh, go ahead. We're going to use the paper clip or the brad. That's what's going to go through these two these two holes that we're about to make. Okay. That's, yeah, perfect. Good question. Okay. So um, you can use your scissors to poke a hole like this. You can um, use a blade. If you've got a blade, you can cut a... Uh, you can cut a little X in there with a blade. If you're using a blade, though, you definitely want to have a cutting mat down on your table so that you don't cut a hole in your dining room table because that would get both you and me in trouble and I don't want that for either of us. <laughs> so you could do that. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my blade to do that. You could also, a fun way to poke a hole is if you've got a, um, a uh, screwdriver and a rag, you could put the rag underneath and poke your screwdriver through like that. That's kind of a fun way to poke a hole. So now we've got a hole poked on each of our bones and we're gonna put the brad through. So um, Bambi, I have a question for you, I kind of poke my hole a little bit better, about um, what was one of the most interesting prosthetics that you were ever involved in building or designing? One of the most interesting ones I ever saw, um, and most prosthetics that you see are leg prostheses, 
Uh, but I once uh, was working with a young man who was an anesthesiologist. Does anybody know what that means? You can type it in the chat window if you know what an anesthesiologist does. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, they're a special kind of doctor that needs to use particular tools. Mm -hmm. um, and he needed a prosthesis to use these tools. So it had a really special end that fit just like he needed it to, to be able to hold that, which I thought was really interesting. Nice. That's really interesting. So it allowed him to do his job. That's great. Okay, so what we just did, if you've got a brad, I'm going to show you how this works with either a brad or a paperclip. So if you've got a brad, you're going to poke it through those two little X's and then bend the little legs back like that. And that will allow your two bones to move against each other. Or let me grab a paperclip. There we go. Um, where did I put my paperclip? Here it is. So you could also just kind of unbend your paperclip a little bit. You could kind of put put it through both sides, maybe bend one, one bit to the side here and then bend the other bit to the side here, like that. Just so that these two things can move, move against each other like that. The issue with the paper clip is sometimes it'll stick out the side in ways that you don't want. You could always tape it down, if I grab some more tape. I could tape it down so that it doesn't accidentally fall out the side. Just thought of that. It's called on the fly engineering. Oh, we had a question from Sigrid. We'll unmute you, Sigrid. Go ahead. It's not a question, but you oh. can also use a safety pin. Oh, that's a great idea. Can we go up and spotlight Sigrid? Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's everybody take a look at what you did with your safety pin. Oh, very oh, fancy. Sure. So is it still able to move? Will you show us the front? Is it still able to move? Look at there. That's great. Let me go to gallery view really quick. And we'll spotlight back to me, but we'll go to gallery view. And I just want to see if anybody else thought of any other ways to move two pieces of cardboard against each other. Did anybody else have? Yeah, Kimber. What did you think of, Kimber? Oh, yeah, there you are. Because I didn't have a paper clip or a brad. What did you use? Binder clip. Oh, a binder clip. Let's spotlight on there. I want to see what that looks like. Can you hold it up for us again? I want to see how you... How you adjusted that. Oh, oh, like a three ring binder clip. Oh, that's yeah. smart. Look at that. That's great. Yeah. That is some really cool things. So if you had like a, a like a metal, like three ring, um, three ring kind of keychain holder or something, that could work too. That's really smart, Kimber. Really smart. Okay. So we'll spotlight back to me up here. Now you've got your two bones. Oh man, I kind of put my bone one on upside down. So there we go. There's bone one. That's fine. Oh, here we go. That's how it was. Because this one goes up and that one goes to the side. Man, I'm glad I wrote that bone stuff on there. So one's going up and one's going down like this. And now we need to add the muscles. All right. So to add our muscles, this is where you're going to get your pipe cleaner or your string. Either one of those works just great. And on, uh, and we're going to make the equivalent of like the bicep. So if I go to this one, we're going to make that top muscle, the one that's red on our example project. We're going to make one muscle go from here and I'm going to extend the arm out. So there's plenty of room. There we go. We're going to attach one muscle onto the back with some tape. You can just tape it right on there just like this. And we're going to put the other muscle on the back on the bottom over here. So Bambi, have you ever made any prosthetics for kids before? A few times. Um, usually for uh, kids who were born without a hand or a foot for whatever reason. Um, and they need new prostheses pretty often because of course they're growing. And as soon as you grow, mm. your prosthesis doesn't fit. Yes. And you have to go back to the doctor. And they also play really hard. So I had to <laughs> fix one for a young man who jumped up in basketball and he jumped down and his prosthetic foot snapped. Oh no. Did it, do you think it hurt him when his prosthetic foot snapped or was it just like, oh man? <laughs> oh no, he was fine. He just couldn't finish the basketball game. <laughs> yeah, that, that stinks, but for different reasons. Luckily, your prosthetics don't have feeling in them because they're prosthetics, so there we go. All right, so just to review kind of what we're doing here, we've got one part of our I use two different things. You can use string on both sides. You can use um, uh, pipe cleaners on both sides, whatever you've got handy. I just wanted to show it 
with both of those things in there so that you can kind of see what either one might look like. And you can start to see how it's gonna work. If I pull the string on this side, it starts to straighten out the joint. And if I pull on the pipe cleaner on this side, so you should start to be able to move your bones up and down with your muscles right now, even before we add on the last part like this. Okay, so we now need a way on our muscle for something easier than us going and <laughs> pulling it like this, something a little, a little simpler than that. So what we're gonna do instead of, instead of uh, pulling on it with our fingers is we're gonna cut a little hole up here and we're going to, on our, on our example one, that has a motor on it. So that motor is pulling the muscles up and down. It's pulling the bicep now really slowly. It's pulling the tricep now really slowly. So that's pulling those muscles up and down. But we, this is cardboard creations class, so we don't have motors with us today. We just have uh, cardboard. So we're gonna make a cardboard version of that, a version of that that you can control with your, your hands and your own muscle control. All right, so to go back to here, we're going to poke a hole right up here at the top of bone one up here. And that is eventually what our chopstick or pencil is gonna go through. So I'm gonna go ahead and poke another hole either with scissors or with a blade. I like my little blade method. I think it's pretty slick. So I'm gonna cut an X with my blade. Mm -hmm. Like this. And then put your chopstick or your pencil or your knitting needle or whatever you've got handy. Speaking of knitting needles, I think Bambi is one of the best knitters that I've ever met. Um, are you working on any knitting projects at the moment, Bambi? This way. Oh, what's that? What are you <laughs> making? Bulbasaur. Oh, he's going to be a Bulbasaur. Lots of people watching know who Bulbasaur is. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they do. That is pretty great. Um, oh, here's my chopstick. So I'm just using some standard chopsticks that we got from the Thai food place next door <laughs> to Matt's house. And I'm going to finish poking through my hole here. Doot, doot, doot. There we go. So you want to make sure that your thing can, can go through that hole and that it's got enough room to spin. So if you've got a pencil that you're using, pencils oftentimes have some ridges on them. So you'll just wanna make sure it's big enough for that to go through and the ridges to be able to still turn because you'll wanna be able to turn that in the hole, like so. Uh, Sigrid has a question. Let me go, we're gonna unmute you. Uh, there you go, go ahead. What's your question, Sigrid? How big does the chopstick or something have to be? It doesn't need to be any certain size. It just needs to be long enough to go through to me be maybe like three or four inches long, so a golf pencil would work just great, and small enough that it will f that it that it isn't like bigger than your cardboard. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's great. So we're putting our chopstick through there. Great. So we've got a hole that's big enough for our chopstick. You got a question from Andrew? Yeah, from Andrew. Do you have a question, Andrew? You're unmuted. You can go. The one in the Nike shirt. Yeah. Oh, you're not done with the strings yet. That's okay. Let's go over. Let's let you catch up for a minute, and let's go over to Bambi. And um, how are your muscles actually connected? To the bone? Yeah, how are muscles actually connected to the bone? Like, what it, what do they get connected with? So our bodies have a special connective tissue called a ligament. Hmm. Um, that's really like a hard cord. Mm -hmm. Um. So ligaments connect bones to bones, and there's something similar called a tendon that connects muscles to bones. Mm. So you have um, the tendons that are connecting the muscles to the bones, but you also have a lot of ligaments that keep kind of like everything close to your elbow so that it's held down inside your skin. Yeah, that's probably what my, what my thing is missing right here is um, that my, my muscles are gonna be pretty far away from my, my elbow here. And on a regular person, like I would, that, it would kind of be like this. So this is just a, a prototype of a muscle, not quite like a real muscle, right? Okay. So let me show you this next piece that we're gonna do and then we can, like you can work on it as you go here. So you've got your, your string kind of taped on the back and you've got a hole po poked at the top here. And if I scooch this off to the side, we're going to kind of focus on our, uh, our chopstick.
for a second. And what you're gonna need is you're gonna need just an extra little piece of cardboard, something kind of small. I cut a small piece of cardboard like that. Um, doesn't, doesn't need to be super small, it just needs to be like big enough that you have something to, to kind of tape onto. Um, so you don't want it really, really small, you don't want it really, really big because it'll look kind of awkward. Um, so um, grab a piece of cardboard, you can cut that down if you've got a, a spare piece of cardboard, you can cut that down. So you want a little cardboard square like that. And you want to poke a hole through it, just like we did before. So you poke your hole through it. And then we're going to tape our chopstick or our pencil or our whatever it is. We're going to tape that on there so that it's, um, I'm going to make sure that the blank side is on the front. This is going to be the front of it. So we're going to tape that on there. And let me show you the way we're going to tape it on there. I'm going to let it stand up for a second. I'm going to grab my tape and I'm going to put the tape down the chopstick and onto my cardboard like this. So across the cardboard and up the chopstick on one side. So now I've got one side that's taped and now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side like this. So I'm going to kind of stick the tape to the other tape <laughs> as I go here. There we go. There we are. I can just kind of fold the excess around there. And I'm even going to put some tape I don't really need any across the front. That's holding it pretty securely. So I've got tape down the chopstick and over the cardboard and tape down the chopstick and over the cardboard. And then the last step, if you want to do it, is to cut the tape down a little bit. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to get, to make this sit a little bit closer to the bone. So I'm going to chop down and over. Like that. So feel free to ask any questions about that that you might have. We'll go to gallery view so that we can see any hands that are raised. But you're basically going to tape your pencil or your chopstick or whatever it is to your piece of cardboard there. So that is kind of close to it, like that. So Bambi, you said the most common prosthetics that you made were leg prosthetics, right? Um, can you tell us a little bit? about what it's like to design a leg prosthetic for someone? What's one of the first questions that you ask them? So first you have to know a little bit about them. Um, so you need to know general things your doctor would need to know, how old you are, mm. what things they like doing so that you know what kind of prosthesis they're going to need. Um, if they're maybe, maybe your grandmother or your grandfather would have a different need than somebody who's seven or eight. Um, and mm -hmm. then you have to wrap what's left of their leg in plaster. So you make a mold of it, Ah, which is enormously messy. <laughs> enormously messy. Uh, and you use, use, what do you make a mold of their leg for? What's, what's that part used for? That, well, because the part that you make called mm -hmm. the socket has to fit. And, uh, in my grandpa's, this part is the socket. That's mm -hmm. where what left of his arm went in. Ah, um, And it has to fit really well. Otherwise they're going to be really uncomfortable. So, um, you, so you mold it so that it fits exactly on their limb. So you can't wear anybody else's prosthetic. Ever. Right. So they're very individualized. It's not like you can just go pick one up at Target or Walmart or somewhere and just be like, yep, got a prosthetic. It's got to be specially made. Exactly. That it's is, almost like sculpture. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Did you, when you were making prosthetics, did you kind of think of yourself as an artist a little bit? Um, more as a crafts, crafts person. Crafts person. Say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cross person, scientist. I have I have another question about when you were making um, robot uh, or when you were making prosthetics. Did you make those prosthetics robotic? Like, did you make them move? Like your it looks like your grandpa's was pretty mechanical, more like what we're doing today, where it was like he pulled strings and it did that. Did you also mostly make mechanical ones, or did you also make robotic ones? There are a few robotic knees and things that are out on something that somebody's going to take home. You have to use things that are for sale right now mm. because you need to be sure that it's going to stand up. I have worked um, with other people a few times with experimental ones, but those they used only in the, the lab and then they wore their own prosthesis home. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, um, so we've got our, our flat piece 
taped on to our chopstick here. And if we go back to our bones and muscles that are in progress, this is just going to fit zoop, right through there. And now you can see the reason why we cut the tape down to be a little bit shorter. Because if we had left the tape un uncut, it would be this far away from our arm. We wanted it to fit just a little bit closer. So now that should be able to turn a little bit as well. There we go. All right. So then this is the part. I'm going to kind of set that there. It sits kind of awkwardly. This is the part that you need a craft stick for. You could use a craft stick or you could use another uh, pen or pencil. You could even use another piece of cardboard. But here's what we're going to do with it. Let me show you and then you can do it. All right. So I'm going to put my craft stick on here like this and I'm going to tape it on there. And this is what our muscles are going to attach to on the top. All right. So I'm going to put my craft stick on the front of my little motor contraption. I'm actually going to pull it out to do this part so it's not quite so awkward. I'm going to tape that right on there. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Tape that right on there. I'm going to slide that back through. And now I can actually attach the muscles. So to attach them, you'll want to kind of make it as long as it's going to be like this. You can kind of wrap it around on here. So what, what's the furthest I want the arm to go? I think I don't want the arm to go beyond there. So I'm going to wrap that around there. There we go. I'm going to wrap my pipe cleaner like that. So if you've got a pipe cleaner, you can just wrap it around the top. Or if you've got a string, I'm now going to make this as long as it's going to go like so. I'm going to tie my string on to here. I'm going to wrap it around a couple times and tie it in a knot. So um, uh, when you were when you were making prosthetics, Bambi, did you also work with uh, like are you a doctor? Did you or did you work with doctors? How did that work? You work with doctors. So to get a prosthesis, you need a prescription, just like to get drugs. Um, so you go to your doctor. It's usually a doctor who's particularly in charge of rehabilitation, and they write a prescription for what that person needs, um, and that includes some things like um how much they'll be doing with their foot so how active they are um, whether they have any skin problems that you need to be particularly careful about um, all that kind of thing and then the person takes their prescription to their prosthetist and gets started well what kinds of skin things do you need to know about so a lot of people right now at least in the u.s the most common reason to need a prosthesis is diabetes because you lost a limb due to diabetes oh um and they are more likely to get sores or not be able to feel well in their skin. And so you have to be really careful um, that they don't get any sores on their skin that could be infected and make their situation worse. Ah, okay. So you have to be careful with the materials that you use. What kinds of materials did you often use to make prosthetics out of? Like metal or wood or what kind of stuff? Well, the actual prosthesis tends to be made of carbon fiber and resin. But inside it, people wear essentially... Um, Everybody know what silicone is? That kind of squishy stuff that you, um, oh, that's made out of silicone. <laughs> oh, they might have, um, like I have a silicone spatula. Yeah, okay. but it's a kind of a squishy material and they wear essentially kind of like thick silicone socks <laughs> over their limb underneath the prosthesis. Okay. Great. Grandpa's great. just wore regular socks. That's what <laughs> the old fashioned ones used. Were really just, just thick socks under regular, them. regular old socks under there. Well, they were prosthetic socks. Yeah, right? okay. <laughs> not, uh, not gold toe. <laughs> not gold toe socks. Let me zoom out a little bit because my stick is so long. I could cut it down and make it shorter, but because my stick is so long, I need to zoom out a little bit to see how this now works. There we go. And I'll refocus it a little bit too because I'm closer to the camera. Okay. So just to zoom in for a moment, if you've got a string, you can just tie your string, tie it, wrap it around a couple times and tie a knot. If you've got a, a pipe cleaner, you can wrap it around your pipe cleaner a couple times. But now that is pulling on the bone. So now as we, I'm just turning my fingers here, and as I turn my popsicle stick, that is turning the mechanism that's pulling on the muscles, which is pulling on the bones. So do I have that right, Bambi? Is it true that muscles always pull, they don't push? 
That is correct. Yes. Yeah. So muscles always pull, they don't push, which kind of uh, makes sense too. If you think about your muscles, if you feel them while you, while you, if, while you stretch, while you pull your bicep taut, you can feel that working. If you go under here, your tricep is pretty wiggly. It's loose. It's not, it's not really doing anything. Versus here, if I really, ooh, if I really make my tricep really tight back here, I can feel that working. My bicep is actually pretty loose up here, right? So as you're using a muscle, you could trust this out on your, your leg, your thigh, and your, um, uh, I forget, what's the muscle, do you know what the muscle on the back of the leg is called? Hamstrings. Hamstrings, thank you, I couldn't think of it. Um, so like your thigh and your hamstring, as you're, as you're flexing one, the other one is a little bit looser and wigglier, and as you're flexing the other one, the one on the opposite side is a little bit wigglier. Um, yeah, and Matt, Matt just said, the older you get, that e the easier that is to test, <laughs> which is true. But I, I remember um, I had friends who would, when we were in gym class, we would sit and we would sit with our, our knees kind of up to our chest. We'd sit kind of like this, and they would like play with their calf muscles because while you're sitting like that, your calves are really, they're just kind of loose, um, and they just used to, used to make us all giggle. <laughs> um, but if I go to this, we can see the side-by-side. -side. Would you help refocus that one? So we can see how my non-robotic, only mechanical one is working. So I've got the bicep pulling, and then the tricep is pulling. Right? And then the tricep is pulling. And you can see how when the bicep is pulling, I actually kind of like doing this with string better, because you can see that while the bicep is pulling on this side, the tricep is loose down here. And when we go this way, when the tricep is pulling, you can't see it as well on the pipe cleaner. You can actually see it a little bit better on my robot back here. You can see how the, when the bicep is pulling, the tricep is loose. And when the tricep is pulling, the bicep is loose. That one kind of does a better job of showing that than the one that I made. But we've just made a muscle, and I would love to see your muscles. I bet some people are finishing theirs up. But if you have yours done, I would so love to see it and we will spotlight you. So raise your hand if you've got yours done and you wanna show it off, because I really wanna see it. Yeah, looks like um, there's one, you've got an orange and a white pipe cleaner down kind of at the bottom, Matt. Do you wanna spotlight them? Yeah, hold that one up. An orange and a white pipe cleaner and you're in, a, there you go, you'll see yourself really big. Yeah, hold it up a little further away. There you go, perfect. Now hold that top bone and spin your, spin your pop, Spin your chopstick. So hold the, there you go. Yes, oh, look at that, that's amazing. That is so great. Let me unmute you really quick because I would love to hear your name. All right, unmute. Actually, you're gonna need to unmute yourselves if you want to, if you wanna talk. Great, can I ask your first name, Maker? I have Germany, so he's still learning English. Oh. Wonderful. You did great for, for not knowing English very well. I don't know very much yeah, German yeah. at all. Um, can you say your name really loud again? Well, one more time, sorry. Well, it's really nice to meet you. That is a great muscle that you just made. Will you hold it up again? Hold it up to show us? Yes. Great making, great making, round of applause. If we were doing this in sign language, we'd go round of applause, very nice. Let's go back to gallery view. Hold one up if you've got one to show us. Ah, uh, our friends in, um, in the faraway island nation, that's actually the same, same place, our friends in Hawaii, do you wanna hold yours up and show it off? Yeah, so you'll hold that, that motorized bit nice and flat and show it off, spin it around, show us, your, yeah, that looks great. Nice job. That is a wonderful muscle that you made. Who else has one that they'd like to show off? I think Bambi made one with us too. You wanna to show yours, Bambi? Ooh, what'd you make? Sure. I uh, was short of popsicle sticks and things, so I made mine differently. So if you wanna try something else later this week, maybe you can try making hands. So mine just have strings, and the strings go through the fingers and around to the back and down through these straws, which are essentially like our ligaments that are keeping them on the hands. So then when you pull. Whoa. Hey, that's great. That looks really cool. Will you show us one more time? That was quick. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it looks like it's got a really strong grip too. That's awesome. Wow. Who else? 
There's someone sitting at a kitchen table. We're gonna come spotlight you so you can show off your project. Go for it. Yeah, show us what you made. Nice. Yeah. That's really pulling that muscle. There you go. That's exactly, that is so right. Nice job. Yeah. That looks wonderful. Does anybody else have another one that they'd like to show off? Is there, um, hold it up if you've got one to show off. Right. Yeah, there we go. Oh, nice. That looks great, Grady. I like that yours has a sparkly pipe cleaner too. That makes me really happy. <laughs> All right, hold it up. Hold it up like we were before and then twist your twist your thing. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Hold, uh, turn it a little bit. So rather than go, uh, than your thing going side to side, your, th your bottom piece is gonna go up and down. So turn it to your right a little bit. So here, Matt's gonna spotlight me so I can show you. So you were holding yours like this and it was coming in and out like this. Turn it so that the bottom bone is coming up and down like that. Okay, we're coming back to you, Grady. Show us again. Yes, that's it, that's it. Oh, other way, she had it. There you go, like that, exactly, exactly. Yes, now twist it, wonderful. Hold it up a little bit higher and we'll see that bottom bone moving. Yeah, looking great. That is awesome. Looks like you used a Ritz box. That is, <laughs> that's, Using what we got at home, that's like, that is a that is a celebrating arm. It's going like this. That's awesome, Grady. Nice job. Does anybody else have one they'd like to show off? Oh, let's see yours, Sigrid. Whoa, show it off. Looks like you were inspired by Bambi as well because that is awesome. Look at that. Woo! Bicep's really working. That bicep is working overtime. I love it. That is a strong bicep. Yeah. Right. Let's go to Andrew. Let's see yours, Andrew. Yeah, look at there. That is wonderful. That's really moving too. That's like rocking out. How about Kimber? How's yours working, Kimber? Let's check in on you. Not well. <laughs> Not well. <laughs> Let's see. Turn it a little bit for us so we can see it. Uh-huh. There we go. So just hold the top bone. So just hold the one that's like the one that's straight up and down. Yeah. And hold it from the side. You're holding it from the bottom. Hold it from the other other side. There you go, yeah, and now turn it. Yeah. There we go, that's pretty close. It looks like one of your, uh, looks like both of your strings are connected to the same place. If we come back to my screen here, let me show you, let me show you what, what happened. So it looks like both of your, both of your strings, one of mine's connected to the front of this bone and one of them's connected to the back. Ah, oh, yeah, and you connected both of yours up here. So just the one that's coming from this side, bring it down to the back side of the bone here and then that'll fix it. Yeah, that's great. You can fix that up real quick. Let's check in. Anybody else got one they want to show off? These are awesome, you guys. These are truly cool. Um, let me unmute everybody because we have this awesome expert here um, for uh, in Miss Bambi, um, in Dr. Bambi Brewer. So we just unmuted everybody. If anyone has a question for Bambi about um, prosthetics or about limb losing a limb or anything like that, she knows so many cool things. Somebody's doggy has a question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it sounds like it. Has anybody ever um, had something happen to one of their limbs? Like, have you? Has anyone ever sprained a bone or sprained a, an ankle? Or now, I guess you don't sprain a bone, do you? Sprain a muscle? Um, usually a joint. You sprain a joint. Usually, like when you sprain, you kind of like twisted your tendons and ligaments around. I see. Yeah. Um, oh, it looks like uh, someone named Ryler or Riker has a question. Let's go to you, Riker. What's your question for Miss Bambi? Oh, we can't hear you for some reason. Oh, we can't hear you, Riker. But you can type your question in the chat box. You can type it over there. I'm not sure. You're unmuted on our side, so I don't know why you're why we can't hear you. Um, might be something with your microphone. But type your question out, and we'll make sure to ask Bambi since we got her here. How about anybody else got a question? We know how to raise our hand. <laughs> anybody else got a question for her? Oh, it looks like Andrew does. Let's go to you, Andrew. What's your question? Okay, then we'll do yours, Kimber. I fractured my eye socket. You fractured your eye socket, like your bone around your eye? Wow, that sounds really complicated. <laughs> um, do you, do you want to tell us how you fractured your eye socket? Is it a good story? Yeah. Uh 
Oh my gosh, you were running and you tripped and you fell forward. Oh my gosh, that sounds really, that sounds really scary. <laughs> I'm glad your eye socket looks great now, man. I'm here to tell you. Looks really great. Um, Kimber has a question. Yeah, Kimber. Let's go over um, to Kimber. What's your question, Kimber? Uh, do you oh. use or make 3D printed pro props, uh, prosthetics? That's a great question because you see those a lot of times sometimes on the internet. And usually we don't because, like I said, most people wear legs mm. and the plastic in 3D printers isn't that strong. Mm. So sometimes people use it for arms, but it's not really strong enough to stand on and walk on all the time. Mm. Particularly if you're talking about going downstairs where your body weight is landing on it, the plastic's just not strong enough. That makes a lot of sense. Sigrid had a question too. Let's go spotlight you, Sigrid. What's your question? I don't have a question, oh. but um, my nerve is wrong in my foot. Oh no! You have a, a nerve that's so, funky in your foot. What's funky about it? Basically, it um, it hurts there, even though it shouldn't. Ah, man. Do you do you ever or have you ever gone to like physical therapy for it to try and make it feel better? No. No. But it was really weird. So we went to the doctor. They were like, it's probably sprained. Then we went back after a couple of days. They put a cast around it because they thought it was broken. Mm -hmm. But then it wasn't broken. Yeah. Wow. See, that's something that I think doctors are kind of, they're, they're kind of engineers in some ways because they're like, something's wrong. We don't know what it is and we're going to try and fix it. Nope, that didn't work. Um, when you were making prosthetics, Bambi, did that, um, did you often have to go through multiple different kinds of like different versions of a prosthetic? Like how many on average did you usually have to go through to get the, the right one, the good one? So it actually takes a few weeks to get a prosthetic because the first day you come in and mold it and then they make a one out of just temporary plastic for mm. you to try walking in and you come back a week later and you try that one and they see how it fits and they fix it. And then maybe you come back the week after that and try another temporary one, all that before they make the final one. Ah. Um, because you, it is really hard to get the fit right. So you really need somebody to walk around in the temporary one mm. and tell you where it hurts, where it feels good. And what the what you need to change before you make the final yeah kind of like you got to try on the shoes and walk around in them at the shoe store exactly. <laughs> makes a lot of sense well we just have a couple minutes left in class so i want to make sure that um everybody here knows what you should do next with what we have done today so the first thing that you should do next is if you are allowed to go on social media then you should go on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook and you should tag us with a picture or a video of what you made today. I would love to see some pictures and videos of some cardboard um, joints and some cardboard muscles. Um, and if you have a hummingbird or if you have some kind of robotics at home, make this an actual motor instead of a chopstick and woof, we will have so many robotic arms going around we won't even know what to do with ourselves. Um, so. If you can go on social media, do that. You can tag Bird Brain Tech, you can ha tag Hummingbird Kit, and for this particular project, you can also tag hashtag Cardboard Mechanism, because uh, that's kind of what we did today. We made a mechanism out of some cardboard. And if you want to tag me, you can always tag me as well. I'm just on Twitter, I'm not on the other ones, I'm just on Twitter. But if you ever have any questions about anything, you can always um, email us. This will get to the right person at BirdBrain. Whether you have a question about um, robots, whether you have a question about mechanisms, it, maybe you have an idea. Oh, next Friday for Cardboard Creations, you guys should do this. We are always looking for good ideas for what to do with these webinars because we're doing three of them every week now. And on that note, if you haven't been there yet, you should absolutely visit birdbraintechnologies.com slash robotics at home because that, for the people who joined today, that is where we found, that's where you found the link to this. So if I go over to the internet real quick, I have my Zoom window up here, but if I go over to, um, there we go. I'll kind of resize this for a minute so it's the right size. So if I go over to robotics at home, I'm going to go to birdbraintechnologies.com. That's our basic website. And there's this really convenient at home button because we figured out that a lot of people are at home right now. And so you can check out some of our really cool projects. We have nice little video series to inspire you on another project if you'd like to, like Tiny Drummer. 
We have these little videos that we filmed about how to, what is the Tiny Drummer and how do you make it? And I'm your teacher today and I'm your teacher on these video series as well. So that's really nice and convenient that you get to have the same teacher. Um, and also down below here, this is my favorite part of this website. This is where it lists out all the live webinars that we have coming up. So for example, today was Cardboard Creations. On Tuesday, we're gonna be doing another one of these. And if you wanna register for it, you can come on here, this button very soon, this button will say register and you can register for the class and then we'll send you the Zoom link and you can join in. Um, something to note is that just for security reasons, we always close the class about three to five minutes in, so you should make sure to join right away so that you can be a part of our class today. Um, but we will have, I wanna, uh, I wanna say that next week, all of our classes, Tuesday and Thursday and Friday, are gonna be a little bit more like this. The things that we're going to make are just going to be out of cardboard. We're gonna be focusing on doing stuff with craft supplies only, because most people don't have robots at their home. But we are also going to be doing something called remote coding where at the end of the lesson, after we make whatever we made, we are going to let you at home code our robots here in the studio. We've tried this a couple times and it's worked. Um, we're still, it's still pretty new, so you might have to bear with us a little bit, but um, you'll get to make things with us and then you'll get to code it at home. I know Sigrid tried it yesterday and Sigrid is somewhere in Europe, which is really far away from Pittsburgh, where I'm from. And Sigrid was coding our owl here in the studio, the one that's right in the middle here. Actually, no, um, she was coding a robot parade float. Um, so she was coding a, a robot parade float from halfway around the world in real time. She would press a button and she would see it move here in the studio. It's really cool. So on Tuesday and Thursday and Friday next week at two o'clock, we're gonna be doing cardboard creations webinars uh, and classes like this where you can also code some robots at the end. So I can't wait to see you next week. Thank you so much to Dr. Bambi Brewer for coming on. You are, yes, round of applause. You can do, if you wanna clap for her, you can clap like so. Um, I am fascinated by everything that you are an expert at. You're an expert at so many things and I'm so glad that you were able to join us today and share with us some of that expert knowledge. Well, thank you all. It's great to see everybody's elbows. <laughs> great elbows, everybody. All right. And with that, we will, we will end our class today. Thank you all so much for joining us. I had so much fun. I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.